Meow Hoople's Cat. Sit back, enjoy. This is the last lecture on active shooter events. How to survive them and how to respond to them. A whole bunch of ground is going to get covered in this one, but not in very great detail. But the information here is stuff you may not have considered. If you have experience with an active shooting, I hope this doesn't bring up any feelings of sadness or grief. If it does, I sincerely apologize. Again, I'd like to remind everybody that active shooter events, mass shootings, are still, thankfully, a very rare event. This is a point where you may also consider identifying possible weapons that you could use if the attacker is able to get into the area. Anything that can be thrown or used to attack the attacker can be a weapon. I've always intrinsically felt this advice is dreadful. Yeah, I can throw a stapler attacker with a semi-automatic who's decided he or she's going to die today and take as many of us as they can. I don't know how useful this will be. If you're going to throw something like that, then by all means throw it. And if people can't really do anything else, then throw stuff, books, whatever. But immediately attack with a weapon and use deadly force. That's the only way out of this if you're in the room with the attacker. Never tell the police or anybody that you actively try to maim or kill an attacker. It puts you in a very dodgy, logical place in terms of the law. It's perfectly fine in that situation to say, I was trying to get them to go away. This forms part of situational awareness in terms of considering what makeshift weapons might be available. One misconception is that everyone should gather in a corner of the room huddled together. Consider what might happen if the attacker gets into that room. It's more effective to have persons spread out, being able to fight back from different angles and not presenting a single target. Even if you're an American, active shooter events are incredibly rare. Deaths from these is very low compared to suicide or motor vehicle accidents or even poisonings or drownings. Law enforcement officers who respond to the scene will clear rooms and evacuate survivors, including those who need medical treatment. However, be aware that the first officers on the scene will probably move right past persons, even those who are injured, as their goal is to find and stop the shooter. After the shooting has been stopped, rescue efforts will move forward. When law enforcement arrives, follow their instructions exactly. Remember, they may not know whether the attacker had any collaborators who may be part of the crowd. You may be escorted by officers armed with rifles. You may be asked to keep your hands up. You may be searched with a pat down. And you may be asked to remain in a holding area until officers can get information from you. Again, listen carefully to their instructions and do as they ask for your safety and for theirs. If you have escaped the scene or if you're hiding at the scene and you can do so safely, Notify 911. In an active shooting situation, 911 centers will be overwhelmed with calls. Let the 911 call taker know the information you have, but also be prepared for them to take your information quickly and then disconnect. In fact, they may simply tell you that they're aware of the situation and then hang up because they have so many calls coming in. The last resort is to fight. Yeah, someone has to fight and take out these people. Someone, you can wait for the cops if you can safely, but I disagree with that. If you are in the position where you cannot evade, attack and attack to kill. Attack the attacker. This would only occur if the attacker is in the area where you are. Uh, yeah, don't start shooting in the school, eh? A shot was fired inside during a fight between two people and a third person who was not shot was hurt though, trying to break it up. Two women, interestingly, who discharged a weapon inside of a Walmart because they weren't very happy with each other, probably arguing about what to buy. The actual clip then shows that that particular Walmart has a history of violence. And if you get nothing else from this video, stay out of the Beach Grove Walmart. People discharge guns inside that Walmart because other people are pointing guns or firing a gun. Friendly fire can kill, even if it's not police or army, it might be another citizen. In a stressful situation, people will have tunnel vision, limited hearing, and are acting out of their minds on adrenaline. Be very cautious that you don't put your back or your front to somebody who might pull a gun and shoot you accidentally. This includes the police. If not, don't go seek out the attacker. Use one of the other response options. If you find that you have to fight back, fight hard and fight dirty. Go for the face and try to disorient the attacker, throwing the person off balance. Use any available weapon, and don't play by the Marquess of Queensbury rules. For reference, this is a word of French origin. In French, it is said as Marquis. However, in English, this is normally said as Marquis. Marquis, when we are talking about a British Marquis. The Marquis of Queensbury was English, and the Marquis of Queensbury is pronounced Marquis. This is a life and death struggle. So do whatever is necessary 
including having a strategy to mob the attacker. If you have a firearm or take the attacker's firearm, don't have it out when law enforcement arrives, as they may plausibly mistake you for the attacker. Some suggest covering firearms with an upside-down trash can and notifying law enforcement to their presence. Dan, sure the event's over before you do that. Research does suggest that this type of approach is effective. A study by Cheryl Johnson, Melissa Moon, and Joseph Hendry used a series of exercises to test different response models. Participants played the roles of students in a classroom with one person playing the role of a shooter. The use of a strategy such as the one described here, offering multiple options for response, was compared to a requirement that everyone engage in a traditional lockdown, staying in rooms and quietly sheltering against a wall. Through these simulated scenarios, the results indicated that providing multiple response options led to fewer injuries, as well as a quicker end to the incident than requiring that everyone follow a standard lockdown. For me, in many ways, a standard lockdown actually probably makes things easier for a committed active shooter or shooters to deal with it. It targets people by locking them in rooms and stuff like that. People haven't fled. I, I, I'm a firm believer of evasion. I would teach my kids if I had them to evade and flee, not to hide in the room and listen to the teacher. As noted previously, every incident is different. But the options that we just discussed offer multiple possible responses that can be utilized. I'd like to briefly address what to consider if you're aware of an active shooter event in your area, but you're not actually at the scene. Don't go to the scene. This is not the time to see what's going on or to try to offer assistance. As difficult as it may be, even if you have loved ones who are at the location, don't go to the scene. There's usually a family reunification center established to help families reunite or receive status updates about their loved ones. Usually they have social workers and bereavement counselors. I managed one for about a nine hour period in the period of time immediately after the Yonge Street ban attack from Incel in Toronto quite a few years ago now. And it's kind of an awkward and odd experience to have to do that. People are very, very out of their minds and frightened. Information is very hard to get. If you are heading to a family reunification center, Take recent photographs of the person you're concerned about and a description, if you can, of the clothing they were wearing that day or the vehicle they were driving that day. It really helps the people in the reunification centre. I went to the morgue quite a few times that night to look in body bags to try and identify people based on descriptions that we were given. It's really a lot better if you have photographs. Active shooter incidents are a common topic of conversation among politicians who are seeking to reduce their frequency. There's been much debate about policy development to address this type of violence, most frequently in the aftermath of an incident. And I'm not going there. And research suggests that there's a window of approximately two weeks after each active shooter incident, during which it becomes more likely that another incident will occur somewhere. This is a phenomenon known as contagion, or more colloquially, copycatting. The Don't Name Them campaign advocates that unless the offender is at large and not yet captured, news outlets should not report the name or picture of the offender. I agree very much with this. I know the name Timothy McVeigh. I can see his face. I don't know any of the names of anybody that he murdered or injured. I don't know their faces either. So my plea to fellow YouTubers is don't name, don't show, because... The hope is that doing so will reduce the attention given to the offender and in turn, will reduce the likelihood of copycatting. Active shooter events may be one of the most difficult to prepare for and one of the most difficult to address. Their unpredictability, violence, loss of life, widespread emotional impact, and terror they induce rips at the very fabric of society. Look, active shootings or active stabbings or active attacks by car are very, 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 very high impact events for the people there. They're also incredibly low probability. There's many other impacting events that can happen to you and are much more likely to happen. Like, don't worry about putting armor plates into your kids' backpacks if they're four years old if you don't have a really well-designed car with a really good baby seat in it and you don't have a seatbelt cutter that you can get even if the car's flipped a few times and you're out of control. Deal with stuff that's high probability as well as high impact. For me, I wouldn't obsess about this. I would support any law that controls guns. Uh, the less guns there are in the population, the less active shooter events there will be. It's true. With that being said, I can't see America giving up its fetish of guns anytime soon. I don't live in America. Doodles. Until next time, be safe. This has been Paradise Terrier Productions 2022.